What's up, guys? So the lesson today is called Factoring by Grouping, and it's section 8-8. Eight -eight. Uh, basically, I think the best way to start it is to actually just look at an example first, and you'll get the idea pretty quickly, and, and then we'll just look at a few more, and then I think you'll get it. Uh, so Okay, so what you're seeing here is a polynomial, but you'll notice that there are four terms this time. There aren't three terms. We usually have to deal with polynomials and factoring when there are three terms. So the strategy that is called grouping is where you take sets of parentheses and you group the first two and the last two terms. Now this should look a little familiar to you because in the factoring method when you multiply a times c and, and do all that stuff to, to factor a trinomial, there is a grouping step where you have to drop some parentheses. And if you remember correctly, the next step after you put parentheses around the first two and the last two sets of terms, you will then factor out the GCF. I hope you can see that in 3n cubed and negative 12n squared, you can divide by 3. And then because the smallest exponent is a 2, well, that's why an n2 has been factored out. The same idea goes for the, the second pair of binomials, or the second binomial. Uh, you have a 2 and a negative 8, and you can divide both of those numbers by 2. You know you've done this correctly when you are left with the same binomial twice the n minus 4. So you can now factor out the n minus 4 just like in that AC multiplying method and you are left with the 3n squared plus 2 as its own binomial and that's your final answer. And this is how you factor by grouping. As you can see the answer is a little different from what we've usually done because you have a binomial that that has an exponent in it. But that's okay. You factored it correctly. And of course, you can always foil it back together and check your answer by just doing, you know, first, outer, inner, last. And when you do that correctly, you would wind up getting what you originally started with. So let's look at another example, one that's a little more involved and kind of representing the idea that is the main event of this section. Uh, you'll notice in this example, we again have a polynomial with four terms. But if you notice, all of the terms have at least one Q in them. And all of those terms are divisible by 4. So what you have to look for sometimes at the beginning of the problem is if there is a GCF that you can factor out to begin. And there is. And you can factor out a 4Q. Every time you notice a GCF that you can factor out, you should. Because it's going to make the problem a lot easier to work with. And sometimes you actually have to factor out the GCF in order to get the right answer because you won't be able to see it otherwise. So when you factor out your 4Q, uh, you will notice that the exponents have all decreased by 1 uh, because you removed 1Q. So the 4 became a 3, and the 3 became a 2, and the 2 became a 1, and then that Q is now gone. Uh, some basic factoring of GCFs. Okay, so once you now factor out your GCF, which you can just leave right there, we are now going to continue with the grouping step where you drop your parentheses. Now, because you have a GCF out here, you will probably want to rewrite your problem like this with brackets. So I did a couple things here. Uh, instead of using a set of parentheses like this, I changed them into brackets. Because now that you are going to have two sets of parentheses, notice like right here, you have two sets of parentheses. That doesn't look very good in mathematics. When you have multiple sets of parentheses, it's better to change one of them into brackets. It just looks better that way. So what I also did is I took both of the binomials and I factored out their GCFs in this one step. So q to the third power minus 2q squared that GCF is going to be Q squared. And then 3Q minus 6, well, both 3 and 6 are divisible by 3. Back to the first binomial, uh, you're taking out a Q squared because the highest or the lowest exponent is a 2. So that means you can take two Qs from both of those terms. And then on the second binomial over, over here, uh, you can't take any Qs because the 6 doesn't have any Qs to give. 
So you know you've done this correctly because you now have the same binomial twice, q minus 2, and you can now set up your final answer. Let me erase all this highlighting, though. Okay, so your final answer is where you take your GCF, uh, the 4Q, and you write that down first. And then you take your uh, binomial that was repeated twice, the Q minus 2, and you can write that down next. And then your Q squared and the plus 3, those will come together and make your last binomial, Q squared plus 3. Oh, and something else. Uh, because the exponent right here is a 2, I think this binomial should have been written first. And it doesn't matter the order you put them in, though, because remember, you are multiplying. So the commutative property would apply. All right, let's look at another example. So you'll notice immediately that all of these terms have an x that they can give and all three of these terms are divisible by three so your GCF oh whoops this one is the wrong wrong example got confused with the next one uh, all three of these terms have an x but the 19 yeah the 19 is not divisible by three uh, so you factor out your x there's your GCF and then you'll notice that we now have a trinomial and you're not going to group a trinomial, you're instead going to do what we learned in section 8-6. And that is where you take your 6 and your 15, and you multiply them doing the AC method. So when you multiply 6 times 15, you get 90, and you have to ask yourself the question, what factors of 90 can add or subtract to make... Whoops. Pause that, back that up. All right, so what factors of 90 can add or subtract to make 19 and multiply to make 90? So 9 and 10 are those numbers. 9 plus 10 is, nine, is 19. And when you split the middle term, the 19x, you will rewrite the problem as the x as your GCF already on the outside and then you will split your 19x into 9x and 10x. Next, now we have a polynomial where there are four terms. So now we are going to do what we are learning in this section and that is group. So there are the parentheses. Remember, when you rewrite your problem, after you drop your parentheses in there, use brackets. And then, 3x is the GCF, because 6 and 9 are both divisible by 3, and there is a single x you can factor out. 5 is the GCF over here, because 10 and 15 are both divisible by 5, and there is no x on the 15. So you can't factor out an x from both of those terms. Now you're ready for your final answer. And your 2x plus 3 makes one of your binomials. The GCFx is going to be in front. And then the 3x, which I'll box in right here, the 3x and the plus 5 will make your last binomial right over here. Ooh, I just see I forgot to put brackets right there. All right, so right now you're going to do a practice problem. And what I want you to do is just pause the video and work it out. And then when you hit play, it'll just walk through all of the steps again. So pause. I'm going to wait five seconds. Okay. So hopefully you saw that there's GCF. And the GCF is 6. Hopefully you grouped correctly. Putting parentheses around those terms. And then factor out the GCF. From both of those binomial pairs. You know you've done it correctly because you have the 2x plus 5. So your final answer will have the GCF of 6 in front 
and then the 2x squared and the plus 3, making your first binomial, and then the 2x plus 5, making the second binomial. All right, I hope you guys did fine with this. Uh, do the classwork, practice with it. There's really nothing more to grouping, and I will see you tomorrow.